Help us with some basics here in terms of offensive line play in the NFL and offensive line coaching in the NFL. How early is too early to make changes after two weeks when Caleb Williams has been brutalized? 36 pressures on 37 pass attempts, 49 total dropbacks on Sunday night. How early is too early, Mark? Well, I mean, ultimately, you know, it was it was really funny to me because, you know, everybody in Chicago and Danny told me, you know, how talented we are on the edges and how we got all these receivers and we got a tight end and Caleb Williams is going to be the greatest thing ever. And he may still be, but the bottom line is that doesn't get you championship caliber football. You've got to control the line of scrimmage. You've got to be able to block people. You know what? I, I look at, you know, kind of quote unquote, the receivers and you have the greatest receivers in the world. If your quarterback's under duress all the time, it matters not. So, you know, my big thing going into this year with Chicago was have you have you established yourself up front? Have you built it from the inside out, which you didn't? You built it from the outside in, which to me is is never the right answer. So, you know, at what point do you start to panic? At what point do you start to switch things up? Like, I think it comes down to ultimately to the way you call a game first. Because you're not all of a sudden going to get better players. It's not like you 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 hit the waiver wire. Your backups are better than your starters. So then it comes down to who's calling the plays, and how do you adjust the way you call plays, and how do you take the pressure off those guys up front to give them the best opportunity to have success. And like I always think about offensive line play, play kind of like this. Like if you ask me to build the desk. So Shane Waldron, and you asked me to build a deck on the side of your house, right? And you want this beautiful deck and you give me all the greatest lumber that, that there is out there. Like you just, I mean, you, you spare no expense. You buy all this beautiful lumber and then you hand me a hammer and you say, build me a deck. I can build you a deck, but don't stand on it. Cause the whole thing's going to fall apart. <laughs> Like, if you're going to build a deck, you got to give me a saw. You got to give me a level. You got to give me a tape measure. You got to give me a hammer. You got to give me nails. You got to give me some fasteners. You got to give me the tools so that I can be successful. And oftentimes we get a bunch of toys and weapons, and then we say, oh, we're going to be great. And you don't give the guys up front the tools to have success. And so that is more, in my mind, play calling. And understanding what you have, then it is we just got to get new guys because you're not going to get new guys. So you better decide how you're going to help those guys be successful by giving them the right tools. So, Mark, if you're Shane Waldron, what is the first step this week in the, the troubleshooting process to, to, to work well, with and around the offensive line that you that you have? So, for instance, okay, let's say you're going to throw it. Like, how many times you say they've thrown it so far? Thirty-seven, and they've had thirty-six pressures. Well, yeah, that, that was, was on that Sunday was night. Just on yeah. Sunday alone, that that's oh, what that was. Sunday, it's Sunday alone. All right, so oh, that's awful. So anyhow, um, <laughs> that being that being said, sorry, sorry, <laughs> it's I was, true. It's I, true. Was, I was traveling back to I was traveling back to New York City from the game I called in D.C. And then, um, you know, I got in late and I ended up watching, you know, the, the most of uh, the second quarter and through the third quarter and into the fourth quarter before I kind of dozed off. So, um, but let me just, let me just say this. So let's say an average game, you're going to throw it 35 times. Okay. That's like, you're going to throw it 35 times. Yeah. So my thought process in throwing it 35 times is how can I get that number down to about between 10 and 15 where my guys have to hold up and actually protect. So what I mean by that is, all right, how many three-step drops? Can I get in five three-step drops where, where I can attack the line of scrimmage and basically turn it into a run block? Okay, now I've, I've taken that from 35 down to 30. Now can I have, you know, five kind of swing pass slash bubble screens? Can I have five um, just straight up or three or four screens? Can I have um, a couple of fake handoff boot keeps where I get four or five of those? I get my quarterback on the edge, you know, outside the pocket with a, a half-field read with a linear progression. 
you know, now I'm down to now I'm down to 22 passes, right? Now can I get like, can I get four or five five step drops where the ball's gone right now? So now all of a sudden it's a five step drop, but now as an offensive lineman, I go, well, all go means the ball's out without a hitch, right? So a five step or without a hitch. So now all of a sudden I can go, okay, I can attack this and actually run block a five step drop, right? So now all of a sudden I'm I'm at you know I'm at let's call it 17. Now can I get three or four, maybe five play passes where I've got seven man protections and we're flagging that ball out. Now I've got a you know a seven step drop where my quarterback is actually about eleven and a half yards. So now I get four or five of those, and now I'm down to twelve times where I actually have to protect. And that's how a game has got to be called. Like if you give up that many pressures and you give up sacks, here's what I always say about coordinators. The O line doesn't suck nearly as much as the play caller sucks, and and so those are the things you have to do. and And think about it from from a guy like me who played the position. My perspective, like we're the worst collective athletes on the football field, bar none. I mean, we're the worst athletes on the field, and we're matched up every time against a guy that's just as big as us and just as strong as us but he's an exponentially better athlete than us. And I'm expected to block that guy 100 out of 100 times. And if I don't, I suck and he goes to the Pro Bowl. I give up one sack. I could whip his ass for 60 plays in a row. I give up one sack. He goes to the Pro Bowl and I suck. And show me one other position in football, or, or not football, but one other position in sport where unlike athletes match up. And if the worst athlete doesn't win every battle Mm -hmm. in that match. We don't say, oh, bench that guy. He's horrible. So you need to. You have to understand understand how behind the eight ball you are as a group overall and how important play calling becomes, how important running the ball becomes, how important setting up your play action becomes, how important all those tools that we talked about. So you're walking out on the football field and goes, here's your hammer. Good luck, guys. I hope it works out for you. It's good stuff from Mark Schlereth. Because like when we watch guys blow one-on-one blocks, or Darnell Wright, who's a damn good tackle, yeah. get deked out of his cleats by an incredible move from Daniil Hunter, th- the athletic discrepancy is massive. So expecting him to cover that every time is folly. That makes, that makes sense. Um, do you need at least one a-hole in an offensive line room? This is a, th- There's a batch of guys here who are very smart, really good um, personalities, good communicators, it seems, good leaders. I don't know if they have any nasty. Do you need one in a room? <laughs> you got to have you got to have dudes that are that, that got some nasty to them. And uh and you know, a couple of guys that are a little bit salty. You, you need the one guy you know, it's like we all got that drunk friend that, you know, or that, that one friend that when we go out drinking, like it's your job to babysit him because he's going to try to fight somebody. Yeah. Like you, you got to have the, you got to have the one guy in your group that, uh, that when he gets a little bit heated, he wants to fight, right? There's just got to be that dude in your group. And so, yeah, I think there's got to be some of that, but there's got to be, there's got to be some finish and there's got to be, you know, in, in, like when I consult with different teams around around the National Football League and in college, one of the things that I always tell teams that's imperative is, and and I think we always had this, and this was kind of an attitude we had, is I want to take the passive out of pass protection. Like I want to always try to be the aggressor. Yeah. And, you know, and I want to take that battle to the defense front want to make them think like oh shoot i gotta protect against this or oh shoot i got like if i can if i can make you think oh it's run and then all of a sudden you you know you have to defend the run and then all of a sudden you have to look back there and go oh shoot it was passed and now i have to restart my pass rush i win a hundred percent of those battles and so how do i as often as possible take the passive out of doing something that's passive you know, out of putting yourself between you and the quarterback and how do I become the aggressor in those things? And that's something you've got to study. That's something you've got to understand. The other thing you have to understand is 
Like, I always think about this every time I line up. Where can I lose? Like, where can I lose this particular rep? And not that I'm planning on losing, but there's one place on a football field that I can't get beat. So I know if I have, for instance, let's say that I'm a, you know, I'm a, a left guard and we've got, you know, a combination, a route combination, a flood combination that, that consists uh, with a halfback burst. So we're in, in something I would call a three jet halfback, you know, something, something halfback burst, right? Mm-hmm. So I know the, the halfback has got to release out of the B gap on the weak side of the formation. Meaning if I'm playing left guard, mm-hmm. he's going to go through the gap between me and the left tackle. So where can I lose? Well, I can lose outside because the running back has to go through that gap. So now what am I, what am I going to do as a, as a guard? Well, I'm going to take a hard inside set, and I'm going to make sure that's the one place I can't lose because I have no help there. Yeah. I'm one-on-one. So I take that hard inside set, and I even sell it as run a little bit, and I say invite you to go to the outside gap. I invite you. I funnel you to that place where I know I can lose because you know what I have there late? The running back coming through there. Hmm. And now all of a sudden he's going to either chip you or you guys are going to stop because you're trying to avoid each other. And I just won without touching you. It's great and stuff. And those are right? the things that you have to understand how to play this game and how to take that passive mm-hmm. out, of, out of what is oftentimes a passive role.